What is up, Jigsaw Health? It's Thomas DeLauer, and I'm coming to you with more low-carb ketosis facts. Today, I'm talking about how many carbs can you have and how should you time them surrounding your workout. Jigsaw Nation is all about ketosis, so let's make it happen. But first off, as always, I have to do a brief explanation of ketosis for those that are just joining in. All right, so ketosis is when you deprive your body of dietary carbohydrates to the point where it has no choice but to utilize fats as a source of fuel. So essentially, you've depleted all of your glycogen, all of your carbohydrates, and your body starts to convert fats into ketone bodies, hence the word ketosis. All right, now let's talk about the workouts. So when it comes to carb intake and surrounding your workouts, we have to look at the fact that there are two different kinds of workouts, two different kinds of people that work out, all right? We've got the cardio group, the aerobic group, the runners, the bikers, the triathletes, all of that, okay? Then we have the weightlifters. We have the anaerobic trainers. So aerobic versus anaerobic. Two very different worlds, even though they are both healthy. Okay, so when you're in ketosis and you're doing a lot of cardio, you don't need to worry about carbohydrates. You see, what a lot of people think is that they still need to carb up before their runs and they need to carb up before their long bike rides or carb up if they're training for a triathlon. Not true. You see, our body utilizes beta oxidation, which is the metabolism of fats for fuel anyway, when we're doing cardio. Now, as studies have shown that during ketosis, nothing is affected. Okay, there was one particular study that took a look at endurance athletes that were in ketosis, and there was actually no change in their performance at all, whether they're in ketosis or not, meaning that the low intensity aspect of endurance training does not require carbohydrates. So you don't have to worry about it at all. It doesn't affect it. In fact, it actually enhances ketosis if you just stay away from the carbs when you're endurance training. Now we have the other group of people though. Okay, we have the weight trainers. And one thing that you should know when you're in ketosis is that yes, ketosis will affect the performance of anaerobic activity. It's one thing that I've noticed myself. If I go on a very low carb diet or if I'm in ketosis, my standards change. I accept the fact that I'm gonna have lower standards when it comes to my weight training. My lifts are gonna be lower, my lifting endurance is probably going to be a little bit less and I might fatigue quicker and it might take me longer to recover. But you know what, I'm okay with it because quite frankly, I love the way I feel in ketosis and I love the way my body recovers in ketosis. But for some, it may be difficult to accept that your strength may change. And that's why this is important for you to listen to. Because if you time your carbohydrates right, you can affect that in a positive way to where you don't feel so bad. There's two different strategies here. The first one is called a targeted ketogenic approach. This targeted ketogenic approach is all about allocating your carbs directly before your workout. Okay? Studies have looked at this and it's pretty interesting. You're essentially having just enough carbohydrates to kick you out of ketosis right before your workout. Just barely enough. And that way, when you get into your workout, you're burning through the extra carbohydrates you consumed and transitioning slowly back into ketosis by the time you're three quarters of the way through your workout or so. Now, you can see the obvious benefit to that. You've got carbohydrates, you probably have more strength, your recovery might be good. But there's also one very obvious drawback. You're kicking yourself out of ketosis for a short amount of time. And even if it's just for a few minutes, you start losing some of the benefits of ketosis. But if you're going into ketosis purely for aesthetic reasons and strength reasons, then this is fine. But if you're trying to get more of the cognitive and health benefits, you probably wanna be in ketosis for a longer period of time because in my opinion, I like being in ketosis longer. I think the benefits truly come when you have a large surge of ketones coming after being in ketosis for extended periods of time. But once again, if performance is your thing, have some carbs before your workout, and then you're off to the races. You just might feel a little bit nauseous. You might feel a little bit of that keto flu kind of symptom as you're coming out of your workout. Now, what's the next strategy? This one's a little bit more advanced. For those of you that have done ketosis before, or for those of you that are looking for a slightly different approach, this is called a cyclical ketogenic diet. What this means is you go longer periods of time enjoying the benefits and the joys of ketosis before you ever truly try to refeed or have carbs. I'm talking about having maybe some carbs, a larger amount of carbs, like a day of carbs, one, maybe two times every 10 to 14 days. Basically, it requires you to know your body a little bit more. You see, you go into ketosis, you enjoy the benefits of deep ketosis for five to seven days, and then you carb back up and you enjoy filling up your muscles with glycogen so that you have carbohydrates to last you for the next five to seven days, even once you're back in ketosis. You see, ketosis doesn't always burn through all your muscle glycogen. A lot of times it just burns through your liver glycogen and still leaves strength in the muscles. So this requires you to know your body. 
Let me put it down in an example form. See, I require like eight days and I don't need that many carbs. So if I have a refeed with maybe 150 grams of carbs, I know that after about eight days is when I start to decline. So I need to refeed maybe every eight to 10 days with a small amount. But someone else may burn out after three days. Someone else may burn out after two weeks. So it really requires you to know how many carbs your body can handle before you start losing strength after a period of time. My recommendation to you on that, keep a log, okay? Keep a strength log so you can have a clear defined data-driven response to how your body responds to carbs. That way you can reap the benefits of everything. Now, for those of you that are really just wanting to bite the bullet and stick with it, you will find that after three or four weeks of deep ketosis, you don't crave those carbs post or pre-workout anymore. You just feel pretty darn good with the way that you are. So in summation, what we found through a lot of research is that pre-workout carbs are probably the safest bet to not kick you out of ketosis too bad. We do have to be cognizant of post-workout carbs though. Here's the thing, post-workout we're very insulin sensitive, which means any carbohydrates that we do consume can kick us out of ketosis much, much easier post-workout. We also find that free fatty acid availability and oxidation decreases post-workout, meaning your body has less ability to convert that into ketones, meaning your body is in a very, very finely tuned position to want to run on carbs at that point, and you need to pay attention that you don't give it what it wants at that point. You fight it just a little bit so that it creates those ketones. So post-workout, don't have the carbs. You see, we always seem to think that this post-workout window is the most important thing. Wrong. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's about keeping your ketone levels elevated and getting the right kinds of foods throughout the course of the day versus just surrounding your workout. As always, keep it locked in here with Jigsaw Health, whether you're watching a Muscle Monday, whether you're watching a Science Saturday, an Ash Wednesday, or a good old Funny Friday. Make sure you keep it locked in here so we can teach you what you need to know to get in the best shape of your life always with a laugh. I'll see you soon.